In many ways, the login capture window is similar to the viewer. Both allow you to preview footage and set in and out points. Note the presence of the same timecode fields in the upper left and upper right, but we have some additional items. The top of the login capture window displays the remaining space on our scratch disk, along with the total minutes of audio and video we could capture at our current settings. At the bottom left and right, we have buttons and fields to set, display, and navigate to our in and out points. You can use the transport or jog shuttle controls to advance and rewind the tape. But the same shortcuts you learned elsewhere in Final Cut Pro apply here as well. Hit the J key to reverse the tape. After a few seconds, hit K to pause. Then hit I to set an endpoint. Note the new time code in the lower left. Now hit L. Let it run for a few seconds, and hit K to pause. Now hit O to set the out point. You've just defined the range of your first clip. Let's say we wanted to refine this. Click in the in point field and type minus 115 and hit return. You've just backed up the in point by a second and a half. Now click in the output field and add five more seconds to the clip by typing plus 500 and hitting return. Hit the Play In to Out button to preview the clip. Now say we're happy and we want to move on to the next clip. If we did so now, we'd lose the ins and outs we just defined. We have to log it first. In the Logging tab, the first thing to do is set a unique real name, which should also be clearly marked on the tape itself. Call it whatever you want, but make it impossible to confuse with any other tape. This allows you to come back and recapture at a later date, which is necessary if your data gets lost or corrupted, or if you're now capturing at a lower offline resolution with the intent to do an online and conform at full resolution later, a process we'll cover in a later lesson. At any rate, a unique real name is essential. Above that, note the log bin. This is where Final Cut will place your log clips. It defaults to the main project window in the browser, indicated by the slate icon in the name bar above the other files. But you can set it to any bin you like. Go to the browser, hit Command B to create a new bin, name it, go to the file menu, and select Set Logging Bin. The slate icon is now beside the new bin, and in the Log and Capture window, the name on the Log Bin button reflects the change. Clicking this button opens the logging bin in a new window. You can also create and set a new logging bin in one action with this button in the Logging tab. It created a subfolder and defined it as the new destination for my clips. I can change back with this button, which moves the slate one bin upwards on the directory ladder. Once we're happy with the real name and logging bin, we can use the other fields to store more information about the clip. You'll notice the file name is grayed out. That's because it's generated by compiling what you enter in the boxes below. Whichever ones are checked are added as part of the file name. If you want to use this naming convention, leave prompt unchecked, and what you see here is what Final Cut will call your clip. If you check the prompt box, this name will be ignored, and you will be prompted to enter your own file name when you log the clip. The good checkbox is a quick way to mark your favorite take and log notes are an invaluable tool when dealing with lots of footage. Logging is the first step in separating the wheat from the chaff, which is basically your job as an editor. None of this information is required, and all of it can be edited later in the browser. But getting down as much as possible now will only make your life easier when you get deeper into the project. We've now reached a fork in the road. You could hit the Capture Clip button to both log and capture this single clip immediately. 
which is fine if this is the only clip you need in this session. But if you're pulling a lot of clips, it's more efficient to simply hit the log button or use the shortcut F2. The clip appears in the browser with a red line through it, meaning it's offline and hasn't been captured yet. You can do this with as many clips as you like, even clips from multiple tapes. All the clip information will be stored in the browser. And, when you're ready to get a cup of coffee, you can hit Batch Capture and not wait around while the machine does all the queuing. Final Cut will do the work automatically, and a prompt will appear if there's a problem or if you need to insert another tape.